I'm very, I'm particularly thankful to um, Dr. Jan Barner and Dr. Dr. Radisha Antich uh, for being here to lead out in this uh, Bible Symposium today. I want to welcome those who are uh, watching uh, live on stream. Uh, we trust that you will stay with us. Uh, lunch is provided for those of us who are here physically. And uh, we want full participation. Please feel uh, free to interact with our presenters today. Both of them are uh, senior lecturers at uh, Newbold College. And we're just delighted that they have uh, sacrificed their time uh, to be with us uh, today. As we begin this morning, I want to uh, lead out in a word of devotion, um, looking at Matthew chapter 5, uh, the gospel of the second mile. Gospel of the second mile, uh, reading from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 38. Let's just bow our heads as we pray. Father, we are just so thankful that we can uh, come together this morning. We invite your presence to be here with us today. And Father, we pray for those who are on their way, hasten their footsteps and bless the time that we spend together. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 38, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you to take your cloak, uh, let it, so take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile with him, go two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. As Jesus spoke to uh, his hearers, uh, he turned their world upside down because they were used to doing things in another way. And I want you to imagine that you're living in first century Palestine and that uh, you have been at work all day, uh, whatever that work is, and uh, uh, you've just finished work and you're about to uh, make your way home and as you uh, enter the path to begin the journey, let's say you're, you've got to walk home some two or three miles and there in front of you is a Roman soldier and he says, you, I want you to carry this burden. And you look down at the feet of the Roman soldier and there uh, is his week's shopping. I don't know what they would have had, but let's say he's got uh, potatoes and eggs and whatever and, and rice. And I'm just imagining 20th century food, but go back to Palestine and imagine the kind of things that this Roman soldier would have had. And he said, I want you to, to carry, those, carry my burden for me. And you're just about to tell this Roman soldier where he can put his luggage uh, when you realize that the law demands that you walk with him one mile. And so it's with a very heavy heart that you uh, pick up this soldier's uh, uh, shopping and you, you, you begin to, to carry them and every step, every muscle aches and grain groans with resentment and uh, you, you, you know, your eyes mist over because uh, this is abusive. Uh, you, there is just deep down resentment. Uh, uh, every step, every muscle cries out at this injustice. And as you near the end of the mile, Jesus says, you should turn to this uh, Roman soldier and say to him, listen, I've got nothing on this evening. I don't mind going you, with you another mile. Could you do it? When you think of the uh, abuse, when you think of the anger, uh, it, you know, your land is occupied by uh, invaders, people who have taken over, and this is an unjust law. Go with him one mile, but Jesus says you should go the other mile. As Jesus spoke to 
his listeners this was a new doctrine. You know, uh, he's the, 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 he says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for, for a tooth. And as you go back uh, to uh, the time of Moses, Moses had to bring in this eye, and, uh, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth rule because they were unreasonable. If you killed somebody's sheep, they would come over and he would slaughter your whole herd. And Moses said, come on guys, let's be reasonable. Sheep for sheep, cow for cow, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. If, if, if somebody knocks out your tooth, don't take off his head, just take one tooth. But Jesus comes now with a completely uh, new doctrine. He says, uh, I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. I wonder if you've ever stood in the playground as a child and somebody's punched you in the mouth. It's very difficult to say, do that again. <laughs> when I was growing up there, you know, the, the, the language in the school playground was, do you want to smack in the mouth? Of course, nobody wants a smack in the mouth. But Jesus says, if somebody smacks you in the mouth, turn to him the other one also. And I think that Jesus is not saying, well, no, ask for another smack. He's saying really, walk away. Walk away. You know, the Lord says, do unto others that which you would like them to do unto you. But we've turned it around and we say, do others before they do you. That's the way we function, isn't it? That's the way we, we operate. Uh, uh, I need to get one over on the other brother before he puts one over on me. I remember as a young pastor uh, feeling so angry one time with the way things were going in the church with one particular person. Uh, I, I, I laid awake that night thinking, you know, uh, I'll go, I'm going I'm to drive up to the district in my balaclava and just slash his tires. That's the way I was, I was feeling. I was so angry uh, at, at what was going on. And sometimes we, we feel like lashing out, but here is Jesus with this gospel uh, uh, that, that, that is different and he's appealing to us. And he's saying, uh, go the second mile. If somebody uh, 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 has done something evil uh, to you, repay them uh, with good. I don't know if you've ever been in an adversarial uh, situation where uh, you've gone to court and uh, somebody has uh, uh, won, the, the, the other side has won the, the day and they've taken from you. Let's say they've taken your jacket. That's what Jesus said. They've won and they've taken your jacket. And Jesus said you ought to give him the waistcoat as well and, uh, 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 because it, it diffuses the situation. But we're not like that. We'd say, uh, excuse me, wait a minute. And we'd go in the toilet and we'd rip the lining. We would uh, uh, stitch up the pockets. And uh, I don't want this person to enjoy this jacket. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I bought a car some years ago at the auction and I did not really look this car over very carefully but having purchased the car discovered that it was a repossessed car. And somebody said, Sam, have you really see, looked at this car properly? And when I went out and looked at the car, uh, the, 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 the owner uh, the, or the previous owner from whom it had been repossessed had written swear words all over the bonnet. Uh, he had dug screwdriver into the lock. So I had to get all these things sorted out because it had been repossessed. And that's how we are. Uh, so if somebody's won my, my, my jacket uh, at the court, I'm not going to, with good grace, give him the waistcoat. I'm going to go tear up the lining. I'm going to sew up the sleeves and, and throw it at his feet in anger. But Jesus says, the father that we serve, the God that we know, is not like that. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. 
Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You know how it is with us. Somebody comes to borrow something and we really don't want to lend them. I remember as a student standing up in the gym at Newbold College watching the uh, football game. And one of the students came to me and he said, Sam, can I borrow your trainers? And I looked down at his feet and there was these tatty, rubbish looking trainers on his feet. And I thought to myself, there is no way I'm going to put my trainers on your feet. And so I said, no, nah, man, what size are you? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying, man, these, these, my, my trainers, uh, they're, I'm sure they're too big for you. And he said, no, what size are you, Sam? And I said, size seven. And he says, great, they're just the right size. <laughs> and sometimes we're like that. We don't want to lend stuff. But Jesus says, uh, those who come to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And Jesus was turning uh, the world of his listeners upside down. They were used to uh, exacting revenge. They were used to uh, getting back at each other. But as Jesus spoke, he took the sword out of their hands. He replaced it uh, with love. He says there is a, another way of doing things. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? If you greet only those who greet you, how are you any different to uh, the man on the outside? How are you any different to the non-Christian? You know, that's the way uh, we function even as Christians, even as Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, I said hello to that brother uh, uh, and he just blanked me. And so, you know what? Uh, I'm not even looking in his direction. And we squeeze past each other in the church, the narrow church aisle. We won't look at each other. We won't talk to each other. And there is just animosity. And Jesus seeks to take that away from us. He says that's not the way we ought to behave. That's not the way uh, we should uh, function. If you greet only those who greet you, then how are you any different to those who do not know the Lord. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Do not even the pagans uh, do that. But I like this. Uh, Jesus says, uh, you, the, we, he wants us to be sons of our Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Have you ever considered if you had that kind of power to cause rain to fall on certain people and the sun to shine on certain people? Oh, if only God would give me that ability to cause the rain to fall on some folk. You know, there are some folk where the rain would never fall. That's the way we are, isn't it? You know, we, 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 we look on certain people and, uh, and we say, well, you know, because of the way that person has acted, uh, they won't see any rain this year. But, 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 but Jesus says the Father causes the rain to fall on the just and on the unjust because he is a loving God. He is a loving, merciful Father. He causes the sun to shine on the just and on the unjust. That's God's love. It's indiscriminate. It falls on all of us. And if the truth be told, we, we, we ourselves are part of the undeserving. But God causes the rain to fall on the just and on the unjust. And then uh, Jesus says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we have wrestled with that uh, 
that text. We have wrestled with it. Uh, Be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. What does it mean? What is Jesus uh, trying to say to us? And we understand that Jesus is saying that uh, in this sphere of love we should be like the Father. But this is one of the issues that our professors are here uh, with us this morning that they will uh, give us the answer as we wrestle with some of these theological issues. But in the area of love, God is speaking to us and he's trying to take away uh, the anger, trying to take away selfishness, trying to uh, take away uh, our humanity because our humanity says do others before they do you. Jesus says do not repay evil with evil but repay evil with good because that's the way our Father in heaven functions. May God bless us today as we look forward to some of the theological uh, questions in our minds uh, being answered uh, by uh, the teachers that are here with us today. Let's just bow our heads as we pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity we have of coming together today. Father, there are things that we wrestle with. But we recognize that as human beings, we, we, we tend to lash out. We become angry and we want to pay back. We want vengeance. We want justice. And very often in our pursuit of, of justice, we don't care who we trample on. We don't care how we lash out and how we get our retribution, just that we get it. Oh God, forgive us and give to us the mind and the heart of Jesus. That we will love the unlovely. We'll be willing to forgive those who have hurt us and despitefully used us so that we may be children of our Father in heaven who causes the rain to fall on the just and on the unjust, causes the sun to shine on the just and on the unjust. Oh, Father, we invite your presence to be here with us today as we grapple with some theological issues. We pray, Father God, that you will guide us. We pray for... Dr. Jan Barna. We pray for Dr. uh, Radisha Antich. As they will lead today, we pray, Father, that you will speak through them and may this be a blessed time together. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We thank you for coming. Uh, There is a program, some programs at the back that gives to you the uh, agenda for the day. Uh, So do ensure that you have uh, a program. I want to uh, also introduce our first speaker, uh, Dr. Jan Barna. You know, as they sent to me the um, the, the topics, I got excited. I got really uh, excited because I said these are uh, some of the issues uh, that uh, as a church we really need to be uh, grappling with. And so uh, I'm delighted. And let me just say that when I uh, invited uh, Jan and Radisha to come uh, and speak to us, uh, there was no hesitation on their part. Uh, They were more than willing to come. It was only a question of trying to find uh, a date that would work uh, for us, you know. And and so I'm just so delighted that uh, our professors from uh, Newbold College have taken the time uh, to come and share their knowledge and their expertise uh, with us. And Dr. Yan, he is a, a systematic theologian at uh, Newbold. Uh, Dr. Radisha uh, is also a systematician, but he is also heading up the uh, Ellen White uh, Center uh, at Newbold College. And so we, we, we've got uh, some good minds here to the, uh, with us today, and I'm sure that the Lord uh, will speak 
through them uh, to us. Dr. Jan Bonner.